have about another 10 minutes, and it's not often that we, we can try and... Uh, Kais has been involved with us for many years. It's the first time we've actually had George here. We've had many other uh, Kaiser folks. So let me go back. I think um, three years ago at Health 2.0, we saw uh, Annalisa Silvestri and then your colleagues, this is Ted Atan and others, showing basically Health Connect when it first came in. I want to wind mm -hmm. the clock back. I think it was 01, 02 when you came to Kaiser. Uh, I, I used to have the, the joke, me and Ian Morrison used to joke, that if you went to Kaiser, it was essentially like Yugoslavia. You know, theoretically it was one place, but actually it was like 15 different segments. You had, I think, Epic in the Northwest, there was an Oceania installation in the Southern California, there was something else in Colorado, and, and who knows what else was going on in Northern California. And you just said, we're going to put this on one platform. So tell me a bit about the decision, and then kind of what the cultural repercussions of that were. Because that was a, clearly a big deal, and you spent a lot of money doing it. We spent about $4 billion, um, doing that. But um, before mentioning the, the uh, medical record part, when I, when I got to KP, we had 125 accounting systems. <laughs> we literally had 125 accounting systems. And the reason we had 125 accounting systems was because my predecessor, two back, Jim Vose, who was a brilliant man, um, was the chair of Kaiser when, when uh, IT just began to have an impact. And what Jim deeply believed was that every year computers got better, and every year programs got better, and every year systems got better, and it would have been a mistake to pick one accounting system or one billing system anywhere and then impose it on everyone forever. So his model was each site should pick the best of breed at that moment in time, and I think it was the right model. And so what we ended up with, though, was every would build a hospital that pick an accounting system would, or, and an HR system would, would uh, you know, build another clinic, and, and we have 550 sites in terms of care delivery, and so we had a lot of systems. And the, the challenge was then to merge them, to bring them together, and, and to, uh, because ultimately there is a huge benefit by having some consistency and some um, commonality, both in terms of support and strategy. And, and the same thing was true as you just pointed out on the electronic medical record. We had a whole bunch of efforts. We had paper records in some sites. We had homegrown electronic the sites and others. We had an early version of Epic and up in Northwest, we had different sites. And we were trying to build our own um, kind of collectively. And it made just so much sense for us to be a vertically integrated system to have one set of software, one set of definitions, one set of IT. Um, and one of the things that we did to make that happen was we brought 160 physicians together to create the collaborative build. And that part was sort of invisible to the outside world. But we brought the 160 docs together and had them sit in a room and look at all the alternatives in terms of healthcare IT, and then also look at all of the options and the approaches and the benefits. And we, we had a collective uh, design work that ended up with people. And then we ended up with a couple of finalists for the um, system. And then we ended up picking Epic and then building an Epic. But because we'd gone through that collaborative build, we had all those people thinking about it, working on it. We had, they all went back to uh, Honolulu or Baltimore and, and with a sense of what we were trying to do and why we were trying to do it, and also became then proselytizers. So we ended up having a better decision made on the front end because of the collective effort, but also much better support. And, and had we just tried to, had I made a decision from Oakland to put that system in arbitrarily, and then just imposed it, we still would be... It would be more like the UK, right? It would be like the UK, the, the, exactly. The, That's uh, what the UK did. They didn't do that. We advised them. At that time, we strongly... I, I actually met with some of those folks and said, please, bring your docs in, do a collaborative build, explain why. And they said, well, no, we know this stuff. We, <laughs> <laughs> we have doctors on the team. There's yeah. a doctor somewhere. There's a doctor here, yeah. So, so um, that... Yeah. Yeah, that's tremendous. You, let's just very quickly, if people don't know, I think most will know the story, but, but run a couple of numbers. It was kind of, I wouldn't say touch and go, but there was some controversy in the early days. It cost you a lot of money, it earnings a little bit. There was one uh, a, a, a series of events where there was some sort of internal, some minor internal dissent around it. But I mean, I think now we're out the other side. Yeah. Under any measures, it's been a tremendous success, both in terms of utilization, so one platform, patient utilization, which we've mm -hmm. seen, but also in, as you mentioned, you mentioned teams and some of the results. So just. I'm going to give you a 12-second infomercial on some of the re results we've seen in, in your system because of the, 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 the new care teams and the new EMR. Well, I don't know if you saw the NCQA. Um, NCQA re rates health plans across the country, rates several hundred health plans, and the, this uh, set of ratings just came out last week. 
And um, back in in uh, 02, we 03, we had uh, a wide variation in our plans, and we had some plans in the top 10 percent, some top 20, some below the midpoint. And they just came out with the ratings, and the number one plan for Medicare was Kaiser Permanente, the number two plan was Kaiser Permanente, the number three plan was Kaiser Permanente, the number four plan was Kaiser Permanente, the number seven plan. When we almost swept the top ten. It was like the Beatles in the 60s and when they first came over. Exactly. It was, yeah, yeah. And, and the reason is because the system works. Right. Because it reminds people to do the right thing, because it sends out great printouts for the patient. I mean, we are delivering better care in a more consistent way because we have that system. And then we have the Care Management Institute who sits down and figures out best practices. And, and there are 30,000 medical journal articles published a year right now. 30,000. And you can't keep up. But the Care Management Institute can keep up. And so what we have is the, the, the you know about the electronic medical library. We have an electronic medical library. So it's not just Epic in the exam room. There's an electronic library that has every medical journal, every research article, everything published on any given topic, and then we have recommended protocols on any given topic. So if a kid comes in with asthma, we have the protocols, we have the science, the doctor can look it up, and then there's a recommendation. And if they go with the recommendation that we, that the Care Management Institute has come up with, the system in the exam room, real time, the doctor can push a button and order the test, they can push another button and order the, the uh, prescription written, and then there's a tracking mechanism to find out whether or not the kid filled the prescription. So the, what we've done is created electronic support for care in the exam room. And the um, model that we're using, our particular model wouldn't be a good fit for the country, but that, that function needs to be there. Every doctor in America needs all of the science in the exam room all the time, and they need best practices. At the Institute of Medicine right now, we're having a, a, a chat about maybe a really fun way of doing this. I'll ask this group what do you, what do you think about it, but the fun way of doing it would be to have on a given topic like asthma the best science and all the research and the backgrounds and the articles. And then in addition to that, you can go down to a separate set of choices and it's sort of like a Wikipedia, a refereed Wikipedia for asthma that you can then check and see what Mayo does for that or what Kaiser does for that or in, and basically take your choice and that way, instead of having one national protocol, which is really hard to do, you can have continuously creative protocols built by the best care systems in America, and then you can look at different approaches to asthma. And if you do the right follow-up care, you can track which ones work better, and that would create an organic, continuously growing, continuously improving database about care fed by the best care systems in America. And the professional associations could add their protocols as well. Because right now, doctors in the exam room don't have a chance of keeping up. There's right. no way. They can't. But th that tool needs to be there. And what we found is when we put that tool in place with our doctors, it gets used about 10,000 times a day. And that's a lot. Absolutely. So um, you've done a great job, and this is going to be almost churlish, because uh, what, I'm about, what I'm about to say now. Uh, but luckily, I found an interesting book which I can quote to you. Um, so yes. Here's, here's the, 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 the I, I'm kind of kidding around. I had, a, I had an intern in my office this summer called uh, Shell Hyde, and, and every time something went wrong, she would go, epic fail, which is actually the, what the kids say, you know, these days when something's gone badly wrong. There has been a lot of criticism out there, right, of, of um, in particular, uh, you know, Judy Faulkner's policy of we've got to have everything on one, on one system. You've kind of gone that way, and you've done a tremendous work with it. But in the future, you're now seeing more and more different uh, uh, pieces of applications coming together. Yes. And I would quote, I, I thought this would might, might That's a good book. quote, but this book's this quite good. It's called Healthcare Will Not Reform Itself, written by a guy called George Halverson. Let, let me quote you a bit of, uh, it says, EMRs need to be linked with each other at the patient level with easy data flow. Yes. Even complete electronic medical records can fall short of their full potential if the EMR itself is not supported by additional computer tools to help doctors sort through the data, point yes. towards desired patterns of care, EMRs need to be a total pet care package, not a standalone tool. And you didn't say in this line, but I think you include in that patients right, as, as well. Yes. As part of that. Yeah. You guys have now got this fabulous system. You did sign up with the Blue Button Initiative, I think, just last week. Ted O'Tan, I think, was involved. But it's always been that if you're in Kaiser, it's, fab it, it, it's a fabulous system. But it's hard to get your data out a little bit, and it's very hard to bring in other applications. So the way that Mark and Anna seem to be going is to sort of providing more of a an app store type approach. 
I've asked, uh, you guys, even though Dave Sabell, a uh, great patient educator, has been showing for years that the communities, online communities work, it isn't a core part of your platform for your patients. And it, I always get the sense from Kaiser, you're kind of testing it and work, working through the, the, the systems and trying to grow it from the inside and then making choices. Are you, do you, would, will you see that changing? Would you see, or would you see that you're going to be bringing in more applications? It, 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 are you going to be opening an API so that the uh, thousand people in the room here can build their applications on the Kaiser and offer out the Kaiser members? How do you think that's going to play out in, in, a, in, a, in a culture like yours? Uh, we just took our convergent medical technology software and made it a gift to you, the you, country. You, you gifted that outside, but you didn't you haven't let... You haven't, but, the but, it's, but the outside, though, is, can play with it. It's open source right. um, sort of model, so we can do that. The, um, We've created the Care Connectivity Consortium. So the CCC um, is made up of Mayo, uh, Geisinger, Intermountain, ourselves, and, and what we're doing with the Care Connectivity Consortium is building a mechanism so that each of our medical records can send information in a safe and, and uh, uh, well-coordinated way to each of the other organizations. And we're, we're tending to take the Care Connectivity Consortium and make that available to the country. So as we prove it, we now have some very preliminary hookups. We will have real hookups by the middle of the next year. Um, and by the end of next year, we hope to be opening that to a broader population. So we're, that's not just with inside the walls of Kaiser. We're reaching out to the walls of Kaiser. And, and the other thing we'll be looking at is, is best practices. We're, we're committed to being at the cutting edge of connectivity. You know, we did 30 million e-visits last year. I mean, we did 30 million visits. It would have been in any other setting um, an office visit, and we had connections with the patients, um, either getting results or getting direct dialogue with the doctor. Um, and, and that's one of the reasons why a fee-for-service model, it would have been 30 million fee-for-service billing opportunities. Yeah, yeah, a different model. But um, we're, we're trying, we're committed to being kind of a, a pioneer and staying ahead of the curve on the connectivity issues. and looking at other people and other folks' ideas and figuring out what works. Um, one of the things we need to do is get grounded in our own core capability. But now that we have got the grounding that we need in these areas, I, I think um, having people come in and, and tell us, here's a really good idea, they're much more likely to, to have a receptive audience than they might have a couple of years ago. So, so if it was to push the boat out, push out the future four or five years, you may well see a lot more integration with our types of applications. Oh, yeah. We're, 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 I think mean, yeah. music to the ears of this crowd. <laughs> so I want to thank yes. George Ellison very much for coming to join us at Health 2.0. It's a pleasure to be having you here, George. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Appreciate it.